Good morning. Slept great last night. It was 50s. It's not freezing. Which pool did you touch? Both of them, the both pool. Well, let's go touch it again. I mean, it's, it's colder compared to the last pool, but I wouldn't say it's freezing. Did you sleep good last night? Yeah. Kind of. Wasn't it nice that it wasn't burning hot? That's what it was. It was like a real comfortable temperature-wise night. And we didn't have to be kicking off our sheets and sweat while we're laying in bed. That's nice. It's not freezing. It is. It's cold. You're just crazy. I think you're just used to having that like super hot water at our rental place. It is not freezing. Right okay, always the drama queen. It's freezing. If you wanted to swim, we could swim and then leave. You don't think that could happen? Maybe. Hmm. But I think we'll leave because this town that we're in is still south of Mexico City and there's a lot of traffic to get around. So. I think it's better, because today's Sunday, it's better to get around that traffic on the weekend before Monday comes around and there's going to be more cars on the road. Maybe. That's my theory. Or Sunday when you were parted. Well, I think Sunday everybody just like going to the beach or going to someplace fun and spending the day there. You know? Family day. Mm -hmm. People don't want to drive on the freeway for a long time. On family day but they do it because maybe it's gonna be somebody's birthday or something special is gonna happen something. I think we can deal with the people that have birthdays being on the road with us maybe there's not that many of them if there's we'll deal with it you I. I'm gonna squish your head <laughs> More than half of yesterday's drive was on the toll road, which was better than the first half because if you've never driven in Mexico before, you wouldn't know this. All the non-toll roads, especially when you're near any kind of a building at all, are full, I mean literally full of speed bumps. And not just regular old speed bumps, some of them are giant and most of them are not labeled. And they're not, they're not, I mean, they were painted at one point to show people where they are. So, if you've driven a lot in Mexico, you would have experienced coming up on a speed bump, not seeing it, and going way too fast and just plowing through one. That is not good for your car. So, I was really happy when we got to the toll roads, even though it cost money to drive on it. Because there are no speed bumps. But, the stretch that we were on yesterday... There was a good stretch where just constant construction, potholes, and it's really poorly maintained. It makes you kind of feel like, why am I paying for this road? But there are other reasons. You pay for toll roads in Mexico because there are no speed bumps, albeit there might be, they might be uh, in poor condition if they haven't been repaired. Also, you do it for the safety. It's much safer to be on a toll road than you are on a side road. Just because there's, they have these, uh, they have these people that are out there just to patrol and you know to make sure that people are safe. They're not out to give tickets or anything. They're trying to help people out. Um, they also have gas stations kind of spaced out in in the correct intervals, so you don't have to worry about whether or not you're gonna run out of gas or not. And generally speaking, you can go a lot faster. And you can go 60, 70 miles an hour on them. So we've done this stretch between Puebla and North. And from my recollection, they were pretty good. So the way that we're gonna drive today, if we drive today, which I think we will, we're gonna go from Puebla, <clears throat> we're gonna skirt like the northeastern corner 
of Mexico City and uh, try to avoid any of the crowd, any of the traffic and get around it and then get to the northern part of the state, north of Mexico City and probably slow down from there, hopefully slow down from there. So, and I just uploaded our video from Friday last night and a lot of you have commented I'm glad that you guys are back watching my vlogs. I'm back to uploading them. And today, yesterday's vlog will go up. So, thanks for your comments. Thanks for your likes. Those really help and I appreciate it. It rained last night, all night, pretty much. Well, it definitely rained. It was definitely raining when we got here. And it was dripping. It didn't hail. It was just dripping a lot so we couldn't leave anything out when we stay overnight like in a parking lot like a Walmart or a truck stop or something <clears throat> we don't want to leave anything out either so even though we have stuff that's packed into the back of the camper just on the floor like our chairs our tables our ladder and stuff like that we need a way to be able to have nothing sitting out when we're camping for nights like last night, even though we're at a campground, normally we could just let the t tables and chairs out. When the weather's not great, we gotta be able to pack it away. So they go inside the truck, which limits how much stuff we can carry, which is great. We actually need to get rid of more stuff to make that process a little easier. It takes a little bit more time to pack it up for a drive, but we've gotten down pretty good. 15 minutes or so, we can get up and go. So we are taking a break from, how long did we drive? We drove for like three hours almost just now. We left at 10. Yeah. yeah. It's past one. 30 hours. Maybe two. Three to four hours we've been driving. Two. Four hours. We're at the town of uh, Santiago de Quirataro. It is north of Mexico City now. We are uh, on our way into northern Mexico, mainland, and it's been a while, but we're back. Mexican Costco hot dogs. There she is. Mexican Costco hot dogs. You guys happy to be eating at Costco? Thumbs up. This water is so hot. It's a good jacuzzi. I think they switched the water plumbing between the jacuzzi and the pool because the jacuzzi is actually cooler than this pool. So we made it all the way to San Luis Potosi, which is, uh, I want to say we're about 450, 500 miles from the U.S. border at Laredo, Texas, or Nuevo Laredo, Mexico. So we're real close. We came here, we heard cool things about it, and there are cool places to go, but <clears throat> there's just not a great places to camp. Last time we camped in Puebla and we found a really cool campground that we thought about staying at for a couple more days, but I'm taking this whole week off. So when I take days off, the idea of not getting like the big part of our long distance drive squeezed into those days just doesn't make sense to me. Because we've got a lot of driving to do still. After we leave Mexico and we get back to Texas, we still gotta drive all the way to California. And once we get to California, we got a bunch of stuff to do to bring our airstream, get our airstream ready, and then get it up to Ojai. And then we still gotta drive from Ojai, get our camper and 
everything that we want to get done ready, and then we're going to start heading up probably to Canada unless plans change. So as much as we wanted to explore some more before we leave Texas, looks like we're just staying one night each of these places. So we left on Friday afternoon. We went from Puerto Escondido to Selena Cruz, and then from Selena Cruz, we drove all the way to Puebla, which was last night. And from Puebla, we drove here at San Luis Potosi. And from here, we're gonna go to probably just outside of Monterey in Nuevo Leon. And from there, we're gonna be back in the border. So, I mean, that's a that's quite the drive. It's a long ways to go, and we, man, I didn't. I didn't want to drive this fast and this far, but the fact that we're doing it buys us a lot of extra time. So if we can do it, we're just kind of powering through. The last time we had this sort of in front of us and we chose not to do it, which was driving out to Cancun, I still think it was a good idea that we didn't do it because going out to Cancun doesn't get us any closer to where we want to be, whereas this does. So I stand by our choice of going to Puerto Escondido. We had a good time. And even though we had to run in with the police, I had to pay a bribe. But that really is just, it's part of Mexico. You know, there are a lot of comments about, oh, you know, this is what happens in Mexico. That's why I don't go. And there are a lot of people just talking about, oh, man, this sucks that this happened to you. Yeah, it, it sucks that it happened to us. But it's one of these things that you expect to happen. It kind of comes with the territory. You know why? Because... The reason why people come to Mexico, or at least part of the reason why people come down here, is because it's, the cost of living is very low. And when the cost of living is very low, there's less development in places that would have otherwise been developed. For example, like, like the coast of California. If people didn't make a lot of money in California, there wouldn't be multi-million dollar homes all along the coast. There wouldn't be places where people own land on the beach and they actively try to block people from getting there. And you see some of that in some of the ritzier, like, touristy places in, in Mexico. But the vast majority of Mexico is pristine beauty. And that's why people come down here. But part of having that, you have to deal with an economy that's a little bit suppressed. And you have to deal with people that make less money. And the fact that people make less money, that they a good majority of the population you know, they live with a little bit of desperation. And with desperation comes with things like this. The police abuse their power, and they, they use their power to try to get bribes. They hassle people that appear to have money. Because their power, they try to equate to some way to be able to kind of benefit them monetarily. And it's really sad that it has to happen, but Unfortunately, that's just the way it goes. And sure, we can just avoid it by going to other places, but that's not what this is about. That's not why we travel. That's not why we take our kids and try to teach them new cultures and get them to see different things. And I think it's better to have experience there than not. So, anyways, we're here in San Luis Potosi. And looks like our time in Mexico will last probably two more days before we cross back into Texas. And from that point on, our driving is not over. There's a lot more miles ahead of us. But there's going to be some changes, obviously, to, uh, to what we're going to be doing travel-wise. And there's some decision that's still yet to be made. And we're looking forward to that. And I hope you guys will follow along. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.